Now that you understand what a probability of a single event is, like the probability of flipping a coin and getting heads, or the probability of drawing a blue marble out of a jar, I'm going to talk about probability functions. Now there's two types of probability functions, a function, a probability mass, and a probability density. And you will see over the next few slides that these are really similar. They just refer to different things, either discrete or categorical events or continuous numerical events. So a probability mass function is just a fancy term for a collection of all the probabilities. So in fact, I've already shown you examples of probability mass function in the previous video with drawing marbles out of the jar. So you can draw a probability mass function using either a bar chart or a histogram. And here's a few examples. So flipping a coin, in that case, our probability mass function would only have two bars in it and they would both be at the same height, right? Because we have 50% chance of heads, 50% chance of tails. Rolling a die would have a probability mass function with six bars because we can roll, you know, the, assuming it's a six-sided die, so we can get any one of those sides. And drawing a card would be, so this would like, be like from a, a playing cards, a deck of playing cards. Then we can say that this is, well, this actually, we can think of different probability mass functions here. If it's about the number on the card, then it could be, you know, maybe we go for 11 if it's 1 through 10 plus the face cards, or maybe we can think about it as being 4, having 4 possibilities if we think about the different suits. And I think you get the idea. So a probability mass function is basically just the collection of all the probabilities for discrete events, and they all have to be exclusive. So when you flip a coin, you can't flip heads and tails at the same time. Now, a probability density function is almost the same thing, except these are for continuous events. So these are events that don't really get discretized or are not categorical. So you can think of the probability of a certain temperature or the probability of someone being a certain height or the probability of having a certain amount of money. So in the previous slide, I explained that probability mass functions that are probabilities of discrete events or categorical events, they get drawn in bar charts or histograms. Now, probability densities, those are actually drawn with smooth lines because, you know, temperature can be kind of infinitely divided up. You know, the temperature isn't going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Fahrenheit. We can have a temperature of 70.00027315, you know, and so on degrees. So when you have numerical, continuous numerical data that cannot really be, or that are not naturally divided into categories, then we have a probability density function. And that also means that when we are working with probability density functions in practice, what we usually do is define a specific range for the probability density function. So we would say, what is the probability that someone is between five foot, 11 inches and six feet tall? Or what is the probability that in the summer in Amsterdam, it's going to be less than 15 degrees Celsius, which unfortunately happens in the summer here in Amsterdam. Finally, I would like to introduce you to something called the cumulative density function. It's derived from a probability density function. What you do is you go through each specific point here in the probability density function, and you sum up all the values to the left. So this is called the cumulative sum, and so therefore this is called a cumulative density function. You can see that this function keeps going up and up and up. Eventually it gets to one, or very, you know, here it doesn't quite get exactly to one, but eventually if we went out far enough, this would get to exactly one. And that's because we are summing up all of the probabilities to the left at each point. Here's another example that just shows a different probability density function. So this, whatever this event is, it's very likely to happen at one, and it's really not very likely to happen anywhere else. So its cumulative density function starts off close to zero, and it keeps growing, and then it gets to one. Now all of these numbers are basically one here because these events are very close to zero.